Okay, um, here is 4.3, determining exact values. You may have noticed that I made a first quadrant chart here of uh, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Um, so this is something that uh, I know you're working towards committing to memory. So you can either use your left hand to figure these things out or if you can, can kind of remember them. And really, I'll show you that it's just the first quadrant. If you've got that memorized, uh, I think you, we can figure everything else out. So the first one for the cos of pi over 3 the cos of pi over 3, there's not too much work we can show here. We look at pi over 3 and cos is going to be our x value, so it's going to be equal to 1 half. Okay, 1 half. Uh, if, I don't know how much more work you could show, you could kind of go up here and put over here pi over 3, something like that, and kind of show that you are aware of where the angle is. So the second one, uh, secant of pi over 3, remember that it's going to be the reciprocal of uh, cos of pi over 3. So we can show that here. We can say that this is the same thing as 1 over the cos of pi over 3. And since we just figured out that pi over 3 is equal to a half, it's the reciprocal of that. So if I show my work here, I go 1 over 1 over 2. Now, um, quickly you can just say if 1 over 2 was my original one, my reciprocal is going to be equal to 2. Uh, if you start getting nervous about this uh, complex fraction, the one rule that you need to remember is that dividing, in this, I'm talking about this fraction bar here, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if I take over this and I write the numerator first, 1, and instead of dividing by half, I will multiply by the reciprocal here, 2 over 1. And then it becomes, once again, apparent that my answer is 2. So for my next question, uh, the sine of negative 5 pi over 6, I think it's a good idea, uh, as soon as you get outside of the first quadrant, is to make a little sketch and see exactly where that angle is. So negative 5 pi over 6, so we're starting from my positive x-axis, and I'm going in a clockwise direction because it's negative, and negative 5 pi over 6, well, if I, if I did negative 6 pi over 6, I'd get all the way over here to negative pi, so I'm really right over here. I'm, I'm a pi over 6 away from doing a half revolution. So the first thing I want to do, and I'm going to just switch to green so it shows up better, is that show my reference angle. What is the, if I'm thinking about all my bow tie angles, and in this case I'm trying to make this the a straight line. So this would be my reference angle. So this is negative 5 pi over 6. And here is my reference angle. So I'm going to go theta reference is equal to, and this would be pi over 6. Just like the amount that this is away from um, my negative pi, that's how far this is away from here. So even though my diagram isn't great, I can see that my reference angle is equal to pi over 6. So in this question here, I'm going to go and say, okay, so the sine of pi over 6 is equal to, and again, I can look over here and say, okay, here's my pi over 6. It's the y value is equal to 1 half. Now, uh, negative 5 pi over 6 is in quadrant 1, 2, 3. And my uh, y value, because sine is the y value, is negative in quadrant number 3. So uh, in this case, uh, in quadrant 3, so I'm just reminding myself, so the sine of negative 5 pi over 6 is going to be the same value, it's just going to be negative. Okay, so uh, just to walk you through, first I find out what my reference angle is, I find my answer for that reference angle, then I think, oh, okay, but I'm not using this reference angle, I'm using this as my actual angle, so the only thing I have to look for is, is it still positive or is it negative? And I look at the at which quadrant, or another way is I can just think, um, are my y values negative down over there? Yes, they are, because the, the y-axis is negative, it's, it's in the bottom half. Okay, let's think about uh, 7 pi over 4. So once again, I'll try to be a little consistent. I'll make a little circle here. Uh, 7 pi over 4. So I'm um, 8 pi over 4 would be a complete revolution. So 7 pi over 4 is going to be over here. Okay, Or if you count it by pi over 4, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So however you get there, that's where 7 pi over 4 is. 
Okay, so the my reference angle would be what would be the equivalent in the first, uh, so that this angle away from the x-axis is the same, right? So that this angle away from the x-axis is the same. So my reference angle is pi over four. The uh, cos of pi over four is equal to root two over two. Now in this quadrant down here, my x value, so let's think here's my x, remember cos is the x value, it's also positive, isn't it? So it's also going to be root 2 over 2. Okay, so this is this is enough work to show. That's just fine the way to do, do it that way. Okay, the cotan of 270 degrees. So we've got to switch our, our thinking cap for a second. We have to think in uh, terms of degrees now instead of radians. Uh, probably for most of you it's easier actually to think in degrees because you've been doing that for many years. So if we switch over here and say where's 270 degrees? So 270 degrees starting from 0 to 90, 180, there's 270 degrees. Um, my x value here is 0, my y value is equal to negative 1. Okay. Now we, we don't really have to use like the root 2 over 2 and things like that because this is your x value and that's your y, y value. Um, so now to remember what cotan means. Okay, so if you if if you get stuck here, here's some reasoning. You got so katoa. I'm pretty sure most of you will remember that. So tan is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, right? And opposite over here, O, that's the same as sine or the y value. Is equal to sine uh, of theta over the cos of theta. Or you can remember that the sine is y and the cos is x. So this is sort of a mental thinking, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you got this memorized. You can kind of step yourself through. So the cotan, cotan is the reciprocal of that. So the cotan of whatever angle, theta, is going to be equal to the reciprocal. So instead of y over x, it's going to be x over y. So in this case, my x value is 0. My y value is negative 1, so 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. Okay. Now, it, uh, you, if you did get a 0 in the denominator, you would say undefined. Okay. But 0 divided by anything is going to be equal to 0, so that, that's your answer. Okay. Cosecant of 2 pi over 3. So again, we've, we've put in a, um, a reciprocal function here. This was the reciprocal of cotan. And remember I said before that cosecant is equal to the reciprocal of sine. So really what we can do here is we can say this is the same thing as 1 over the sine of 2 pi over 3. Okay, so if we get a fraction like root 3 over 2 or root 2 over 2 or something for this, uh, 1 over that, we just do the reciprocal of that fraction. Okay, so where is 2 pi over 3? So if we draw our um, diagram, so a single pi over 3 is over here, and another pi over 3 is going to be uh, oh, over there. This is where 2 pi, because remember 3 pi over 3 would be here. So this is 2 pi over 3 right there. So this is uh, pi over 3 is our, our reference angle. So the sine of pi over 3, uh, looking at our diagram, I don't see it w uh, with me there, but it would be root 3 over 2. And in quadrant number 2, so this is my reference angle, this is going to be the same answer, but perhaps it's still positive or maybe it's negative. And let's consider. So sine is my y value and my y's are positive over there. So the sine of 2 pi over 3 is also equal to root 3 over 2 because in quadrant number 2 sine is also positive. So going over here I can write 1 over root 3 over 2. Now that's remember the pattern that's the same thing as this one as a reciprocal so it's 2 over root 3. Uh, that is acceptable if you would like to you can also rationalize the denominator uh, I'm not sure that if the textbook um, in their answers, whether they rationalize the denominator, it's a good uh, habit to be able to give this answer and the other answer as well. So when we multiply by root 3 over 3, what happens is the denominator, uh, root 3 times root 3 is 3, and so we get 2 root 3. So these are the two possible ways that you'll find the answer in an, in an answer key. Okay, we have two left, and then um, I'm going to get you guys to doing some practice. I'm not going to move on. So 11 pi over 4. Let's consider here. Oh, once I get my thing back, okay. 11 pi over 4. That's a pretty big one. So 
Um, 11 pi over 4, it would be coterminal with, if I subtract 2 pi, in other words, if I subtract 8 pi from that, would be the same thing as 3 pi over 4, okay? So 11 pi over 4 would be a whole lap, and then uh, 3 pi over 4. So these are coterminal. So if I consider where 3 pi over 4 is, here's a pi over 4, here's 2 pi over 4, here's 3 pi over 4. So there is 3 pi over 4, okay? My reference, so there it is, my reference angle over here would be pi over 4. So I'm going to say my reference theta r is equal to pi over 4. Uh, the tan of pi over 4. This is a question that kind of looks like it's hard, but then comes out uh, rather straightforward afterwards. The tan of pi over 4. Now, um, tan is equal to the y value over the x value, or another way to think of it is the sine over the um, cos. So uh, it's the same thing as the sine of pi over 4 over the cos of pi over 4, and some of you might be going, oh, now i got all these crazy fractions. But it's actually uh, straightforward, isn't it? Because both of these are root 2 over 2. And you're going to see that. So these pi over 4 multiples, is, they're either going to be uh, positive 1 or negative 1. So root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 1, because they're the same. Uh, now, let's consider about uh, 3 pi over 4. So remember, tan is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. Uh, here, because x and y are both positive, and here, because an x and y are both negative. But tan is negative here and negative there. So for 3 pi over 4, uh, I don't know where I can write this here, tan of 3 pi over 4, however, is going to be equal to negative 1, because it's in quadrant 2. So. Uh, Tan of 11 pi over 3, or tan of 11 pi over 4, is equal to negative 1. Getting a little bit crowded with my work here. Okay, uh, last one. The secant of 5 pi. Okay, so just a reminder. I'm going to switch to green so things show up a bit better. Just a reminder that secant is the same thing as 1 over the cos of 5 pi. Um, where is 5 pi? Okay, so 2 pi is all the way around, right? Uh, and then 4 pi, and so 5 pi is going to be over here, okay? Uh, perhaps you could say 5 pi uh, is coterminal, so if we subtract uh, three, uh, subtract 2 pi from it, I'd get 3 pi. I could say, oh, that's still more. 3 pi minus 2 pi equals pi. So it's coterminal, 5 pi is coterminal with pi, and that's where pi is. So at that point here, what's my x value and what's my y value? x value is negative 1, and the y value is 0. So I get a negative 1 and a 0. For cos, I want to use the x value. I want to use the negative 1. So it's going to be 1 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. So you're going to see lots of times, let's check out our answers. We had a negative 1, a negative 1, Oh, here we actually had a more complicated answer, but quite often uh, they'll set these things up and you'll get nice, neat answers. Um, I'd like to, I'm going to stop now, and I want you to uh, work on page 201, uh, number 1, and I think there's about, uh, it goes up to the letter L, but I would like you to try all of those, because I think this is something that we really want to nail down before you go on to you know, putting a little complexities to it and things like that. Okay, so I'll see you in class.